Right, so firstly, a quick rant. And I'm trying to do this from a place that's trying to help you more than actually having an attack on certain creators. But please, I beg you, if you're watching TikTok shop live content for smartphone advice, please stop. I've seen countless content creators on TikTok shop flogging phones over there and seriously misleading you. I heard one person say a 120 hertz display means that it's a high definition good display. One person say the 69 pound Infinix smartphone was as good as Samsung. Not, not a specific model, just as good as Samsung, the brand. No. Please no. And the worst thing about it was when I looked at the comments, there were quite a few number of people that were saying they were going to trade in their Samsung S22s for this Infinix 69 pound phone. And this isn't anything against Infinix because they do do some great phones for the price, but you can't say that a 69 pound phone from Infinix is going to be as good as the S22. Just if you are buying that sort of product, manage your expectations because these content creators are making money from you buying these devices through the links that they provide. They'll be lining their pockets at the expense of you. TED Talk done, rant over. On with the video. So 2022 was an amazing year for smartphones. But if you waited until now to buy one, should you pull the trigger and buy what is available currently right now? <laughs> Let's pretend that that never happened. But if you are a Call of Duty sniper looking to hunt down your next target, these are my personal favorite currently available. And on smartphones, I have tested hundreds, so I would like to think that I, I do know what I'm talking about in this field. And I've broken it down into many sections for you, and I've also got a little bit of fun towards the end. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Sub to the channel and turn on notifications if you enjoy this sort of content, and thanks to Aerolo for sponsoring today's video. Right, so the first phone on the list is a complete curveball. And the reasoning behind it is because it is 18 months old, believe it or not. Released back in 2021, but it's still a beast. It's the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And for a few reasons, it might actually be better for you than the current 14 Pro Max. Like battery, for example. The latest phone is actually a downgrade. This is an utterly insane battery beast. On top of that, if you can find it elsewhere, away from the Apple website, because it is currently not listed anymore, you'll find it cheaper. So there's that. As well as that, the Dynamic Island feature on the new iPhone 14 Pro Max was a big headline hit, don't get me wrong, and I have enjoyed using it. But the novelty does wear off a little bit, and if you're watching media, gaming, then the notch on the older phone actually cuts into the display less. So technically, again, you might prefer the older phone. Outside of that, there are a few tweaks to the newer phone, but largely, it's a very similar device. Looks the same, feels the same, same premium hardware. Slight downgrade on the chip, A15 to the A16 Bionic, but it's still fantastic. I mean, it's still currently one of the highest performers available. And for most people, for 90% of what we use phones for, you won't notice the difference between the two in terms of performance. And I would argue, maybe a better phone considering the price. Next is the budget beast category. And there are a few options here, but I've got two main ones for you. It's more of a great price for what you get than necessarily the most affordable. Starting with the Honor 70. It is a brilliant mid-range priced flagship killer kind of phone. Honestly, when I unboxed this and reviewed it on the channel, I was blown away. And considering, as I said, I do review so many phones, it's not often that I do pick up a phone and go, how have they done that? And that's exactly what I felt when I reviewed it. And I said so as much in that video. Beautiful design, solid camera, large vibrant 120Hz OLED display, impressive performance with the Snapdragon 778G Plus chip, and all for around 400 US dollars. Flagship, flagship killer. Don't know why I said flagship twice, but that is it. The flagship, flagship, flagship killer. Boom. <laughs> Another two phones on the list that are amazing value for money are number one, the Poco F4 GT. Great phone, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, 120Hz AMOLED display, 64 megapixel triple camera. Again, just a kind of great halfway house between being a normal and a gaming phone, because you've got these little triggers 
on the top as well here, which is pretty cool. Um, and another one from Poco, the X4 Pro. The X4 Pro you can pick up for sub £300. I probably wouldn't recommend jumping out and buying it right now because there is a heavily rumoured X5 Pro coming out in the very near future, which according to what you can find on the internet looks amazing again considering the price but for the price the x4 pro is brilliant honorable mentions in this category the infinix 020 looks absolutely beautiful and uh is no slouch in many departments see i don't hate infinix before you start giving it that. The Xiaomi 12 Lite is another fantastic option and the Pixel 6a, although I have placed this in another category a bit later on. Next up on the list is the guarantee. And this phone basically guarantees that whatever phone you're coming from, number one, after a little period of breaking, you shouldn't have too many problems getting used to it. And number two, you shouldn't have any problems in terms of performance because it does everything to a very high standard. This is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And if you don't mind a curved display, then this is a fantastic option. Great performance, whether that be Exynos or Snapdragon chips, whatever region you're from. Yes, Snapdragon traditionally has provided slightly better chips than the Exynos ones. And a lot of people in the UK, for example, in Europe tend to be slightly a bit peeved by the Exynos variants, but I mean, realistically, again, when you talk about 95% of what people use a phone for, you're not going to notice that difference between the chips. And that's not saying I necessarily condone them using two chips. I think they should just use one to make it completely fair across the board. But that's another argument. Still, even with the Exynos chips, they are great performers. Battery, while not the best on the list, is still competitive. Camera, one of, if not the most complete camera systems really subjective nuances aside great video premium head turner build quality the added s pen feature you also have of course samsung's extensive ecosystem that they are building you can use this with samsung decks very very easy to do and just the samsung smart ecosystem as a whole gives you that kind of additional reassurance that this can be more than just a phone it can be the hub you've got your samsung galaxy watch all of your smart home devices etc the guarantee. Next up, we have a very exciting category, the Wave Maker. The phone that I think tore the rule book up more than the rest of them and tried something really quite different to try and create a stir within the industry that can be accused of being a bit stagnant at times and them all kind of copying each other. Offering a alternative to the masses. You can probably guess the phone already. It has had a lot of good press the nothing phone one the wave maker now i know what you're thinking i've said i like it because it's tried to be a bit different although it does look very much like the iphone even if the founder carl pay doesn't agree with that sentiment but it's certainly got tongues wagging mainly for its glyph feature which lights up the transparent back panel with led flashes for notifications charging info etc i think it looks amazing a true head turner similar to the iphone 14 pro lineup with the dynamic island it does kind of lose its appeal a little bit after a while and potentially is a little bit gimmicky but I just love that they've tried something different. The transparent back, the, the LED lights. They could have played it very safe. And I've got to praise them for that. I'm super excited to see where they go with their next phone because we know that Carl Pei is a PR stunt marketing genius with what he's done with OnePlus and now nothing. Um, so I'm expecting big things. Smooth, almost flagship performance, much like the Honor 70 I previously mentioned. Okay camera, not the key focus here, but solid for the most part. And same can be said for the 4500 mAh battery. I love the sharp, clean, flat 120Hz OLED display in conjunction with the minimalistic to the point software. A brilliant entry into the phone space for the Nothing brand and all for just 400 squids. Honorable mention in the Wave Maker, we have the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra. What ZTE are doing with their under the display camera tech is great and long may it continue. And they're really rivaling the likes of Samsung and Xiaomi in that sort of area. And it's just a really nice, well-rounded, good phone. 
if you want that full screen display. Now I mentioned Carl Pei and his former company OnePlus, and they have an entry into this list with the OnePlus 10 Pro picking up the Unfair Flack Award. Now, don't get me wrong, probably not the best category to be winning in this list, but it's important that we address this. As it seems, there is a fair amount of unfair flack, in my opinion, with the brand as a whole recently and this specific device. Because you'll notice that as soon as one fairly high profile content creator, reviewer, says something negative about a brand or a product, there seems to be a bit of an echo chamber din. The exact thing can be said for the OnePlus 10 Pro. It got a bit of bad press early on, and then everybody kind of just said, no, it's rubbish. When in reality, it couldn't be further from the truth. This phone and OnePlus as a whole has been under a lot of scrutiny recently for falling behind on their undeniable success in the early years. They were famed for creating handsets with powerful flagship performance, simple, clean, fast and smooth software, and an absolutely killer price. They were the original modern day wave maker. But partly due to the fact that a lot of people have been feeling like they're kind of edging more towards Oppo in terms of software because they are under that same umbrella of companies and just kind of losing their identity slightly. Their once incredible launch excitement for new products has definitely, you feel, dimmed a little in the last year or so. And the OnePlus 10 Pro was a perfect example of this. Not only did some people find fault with its build quality, but also a lot of reviews just kind of said it's just a bit meh. But I don't really agree with that sentiment. Number one, simply don't try and snap your phone in two and you should be okay. <laughs> just like many tech devices, don't try and break them. <laughs> it's a phone, not a shield. <laughs> and number two, the phone still represents a very good package because if you take a lot of the key features about OnePlus devices, the OnePlus 10 Pro still has it. Gorgeous display, incredible performance, good camera, good battery, and a great value of just £649 as it's now on sale with the 11 series believed to be dropping very soon. And I'd actually go as far as saying for just £429, the OnePlus 9 Pro might actually be an even better option. Just don't be clumsy fingers like me. Use the case. Spider-Man, look at it! I quite like it. My own ASBYT spider skin. No? Look at that mirror. It's beautiful. We digress. £429. Absolute steal. As is this next phone. And this one is just a little gem for just about everybody who just wants a phone to do the basic things. No bells and whistles, no crazy price tag, just do the normal things that we need a phone for and do them well. The Pixel 6a might be the best phone for the every person. Not only do you get all of those fantastic Google software features that only Pixel phones get, but you also get a very premium build for the money. You get a very competitive camera for the money. Basically the same primary lens as on the more expensive models and an ultra wide as well. 4K video recording, fairly premium build. Google's in-house Tensor chip, the original pretty decent little performer. And a 4410 mAh battery, although the battery life actually seems to outperform the capacity it's just a really great all-round little phone, and the haptics are fantastic. I do love Google's implementation of haptic feedback. That that just added the little vibrations. Oh, beautiful stuff. <laughs> Getting a little bit excited and calm. And did I mention that it's just £299? No, I didn't. Well, there it is. Wow. And that's why the Pixel 6a is probably the best phone for the every person. You get a hell of a lot for... £299. Now we're going niche. We are going foldables. And there are a number of great options here. You have the likes of Samsung with their Z Flip and Fold 4s, Xiaomi with their Mix Fold 2. But the two that I've gone for here are here for two different reasons. The first on the list is the Honor Magic VS. And the main reason is because it does a lot of what Samsung do with their Z Fold 4, but crucially, they've managed to produce the device for 
hell of a lot cheaper than the Samsung Fold 4. The Fold 4 retails for roughly around 1600 UK pounds, which is uh, a fair chunk. The Magic VS is currently, and this is a converted Chinese pricing, under £1,000. So it's around £950, something like that. Again, this is a converted price. It may not be completely the same when it does come to market globally. But if it doesn't undercut Samsung when it is released globally, I'll eat my own nose. I probably won't because that would be a bit weird. But, <laughs> but that pricing for what you get, I think... It's just incredible. Gorgeous, pretty large 120 hertz outer OLED display. Big enough, I feel, for most phone activities. Often foldables outer displays can be a little bit small and finicky and you just end up wanting to open it all the time. I don't feel that with the Magic VS. It feels much closer to a traditional phone experience. And the inner OLED display is nice too. It is only 90 hertz inside. That could be improved, but it's certainly bright enough at 800 nits with the outer being 1200. Blazing performance running on the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and a substantial battery at 5000 mAh. Again, this is significantly larger than the Z Fold 4s. And on top of that, you have a pretty competitive triple camera setup. 54 megapixel primary, 50 megapixel ultra wide and an 8 megapixel telephoto. A pretty stacked phone indeed, as is the second foldable and possibly my favorite overall in the foldable market currently right now, the Oppo Find N2. I absolutely love the idea of this phone. Tiny package for a... <laughs> Tiny package for a foldable, a really bright 5.54 inch 120 hertz outer display and an even brighter 7.1 inch 120 hertz inner. It just looks amazing. And because it's so diddy and small, it fits in the pocket and it doesn't really feel like a foldable at all. Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, 50 megapixel triple camera, stereo speakers, Android 13, just a great folding phone. The only main caveat, it, but it is a pretty big caveat, is the fact that the phone hasn't currently, and there is no evidence of it ever being released globally. And I think that's a real shame because I think the world needs to experience this device. If it does just stay as a Chinese version only, you can still get it, you can still use it, but you'll have to modify the software a little bit. It's just not going to be as easy as if they made a global ROM. Come on, Oppo, do the honourable thing. And if they do, and you can afford the hefty price tag, snap it up. Snap it up. Mwah. I've done that twice in this video. <laughs> <laughs> Best camera phone, short and simple. In my opinion, if family, pets, portrait shots kind of vibe is your thing, look no further than a Pixel phone. Pixel 7 Pro, specifications wise, it is the most complete Pixel phone in terms of camera. And the reason why I like it for those types of shots is because of the software. The shutter speed still seems faster than pretty much any other phone out there because you get hardly any motion blur when taking portrait shots. So much is done post-processing that it can just take the shot and kind of work it out afterwards. And none of the other phones have that ability. Primary, ultra wide and telephoto lenses, good video, good HDR. Sometimes when you're taking zoom shots, I've noticed including in portrait shots when you're using the two times, it does seem a little bit over sharpened. But uh, apart from that, it's just a hella complete phone camera. <laughs> hella, hella complete. Yeah, that's what you get. Outside of that, if reliability is your thing, then look no further than the iPhone 14 Pro series. The iPhone camera app for taking photos is just still king, in my opinion. If you want to take a shot, you take it, it does it. There's no real glitching. There's no ever sort of taking too long to process when you've taken a photo. It just, it's very, very reliable. And that is something that I think sometimes gets downplayed. Yes, some of these other phones sometimes have better hardware. The iPhone is just a very complete, well-rounded camera. And you can get some lovely, lovely shots. I do find sometimes he's slightly overexposed in the bright spots. It looks a little bit artificial, a little bit weird. And similar to what I was mentioning, portrait shots, if you've got a moving subject, there is sometimes quite a lot of blur. 
and that is disappointing. You may miss a shot that you may not miss on the Pixel, for example. But while not a huge upgrade on the... Where's it gone? Doesn't matter. The iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, you do have the higher megapixel count on the primary sensor, the 48 megapixels. You also have 4K in cinematic mode now as well, 1080p on the 13 series. So there are advantages of picking up the newer model in terms of camera. Just a great all-round package if you like color temperatures being quite warm. I personally find it too warm. I've well documented, I won't go into it. Tomato face, we move. For all-round photography and videography, Probably look no further than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Honourable mention, Samsung flagship phones. They do fantastic cameras and video as well. But personal preference, I wouldn't, I'd probably put it maybe third. And I know some of you will be talking about Sony phones for cameras. Great hardware, not so great or complicated for the every person software so to recommend it is difficult if you're very into manual photography you may want to go with the sony phone for camera although if you're going like that you've probably got a dslr or something and then you may not want i personally think if you're using your phone for photography and videography auto modes should be the most used and most hyped feature that's just me for a short category next best phone currently available that you can't buy oppo find n2 like i've mentioned the flat screened Xiaomi 13 and curved 13 Pro and the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. Again, all of which aren't available globally currently. Yes, this may change, but currently right now, they are fantastic phones to keep your eyes peeled for that you cannot currently buy here in the West outside of shipping them from China with a Chinese ROM. Another short one, best small phone. Asus of Zenfone 9, not gonna go into detail. Specs list here. Just kills it. And Asus have also stolen another category here with the battery beast. And again, it's another pretty small category to talk about. The Asus ROG Phone 6 Pro. To cram a 6,000 mAh battery inside this not so large outer shell, it looks really no different to any of the phones you see in front of you here, is nothing short of incredible. And it has 18 gigabytes of RAM. Brilliant phone for gaming with it. Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Camera's okay, not amazing. 50 megapixel primary is decent, although the ultra wide and macro could do with improving. But stereo speakers, headphone jack, 165 hertz AMOLED display with a two inch OLED display on the back as well, which is um, a nice little touch. Just a fantastic all round phone, especially if you are into gaming and need that long lasting battery. Good stuff. Two, don't know what I'm trying to say there. Two other categories to come before the fun and games at the end. And this next one is for the most underrated phone currently available. And in my opinion, I think it is the Pixel 7. It's just a very, very good phone for the price. But because it launched as always with a lot of these manufacturers, they launch them with a pro model. The standard model often doesn't get the same press, but so much of the good things about the pro, you can also get on the standard. Same Tensor T2 chip, latest Android software updates, basically the same primary and ultra wide lenses, just missing the telephoto. Under the display fingerprint scanner, 90 Hertz AMOLED display, could be 120, but again, you get that on the Pro, so you can see why they haven't. IP68 water resistance, great speakers, great haptics, premium feel, Google goodness. How many times am I going to hit this phone? And it's still fine. Look at that. Mm, it's a beast. Mm. Now, I've told you not to do that already, haven't I? Good solid phone for most people. Again, there's a reoccurring theme about Pixel phones. They, they are very, very good for the every person. So two great options there. That is £200 cheaper than the Pro, and that is £200 cheaper than that. So they've, they've kind of got you covered there. This isn't an ad for Google, by the way. Although it, it sounds like it, doesn't it? I do. I like Pixel phones, I'm not going to lie. So... Bum, 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 bum. And now for the finale. Well, not the finale. We've got the fun bits to come, but the final category in this list of my favourite smartphones currently available right now is the best overall phone or at least the one that I've used the most over the last year and I'm going to split it 
into three phones. I've used three phones on and off the most over the last year. Number one is the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Third time I've done that. <laughs> An incredible all-round phone. It really is superb. Beautiful premium design. Probably the best looking smartphone out there, actually, in my opinion. Gorgeous curves on this ceramic back. I love ceramic phones. Great camera. Exceptionally fast, fluid and smooth performance. Solid battery, easy to use, just a great phone. Also on the list of the three, again, Pixel 7 Pro, I have used this a lot, I can't deny, love the camera. It just, I'm so excited by the fact that Pixel phones now compete in terms of design hardware because they were always so bland and basic and it used to really drive me insane. I used to love the camera, but the battery and the designs were always a bit of a letdown. They've kind of rectified both of those, so I can strongly now recommend them, which I love. You, of course, have all of the great Google software features, again, that are only for the Pixel line. And just my go-to camera if I'm taking pictures of my family and Bonnie. And then I always have to have an iPhone in my arsenal, even though I'm a Chelsea fan <laughs> for my sins at the moment. We are, oh, we are dreadful. Uh, moving on, because that's depressing. Um, I always have an iPhone on me, usually the latest one. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is my current iPhone of choice. But again, like I said, could be the 13 Pro Max still. And I like it because I use a Mac. Great for file transfers. Great for, I've got a lot of air tags and things like that because I lose all my stuff all the time. So it's just easy to put it on my wallet, my keys, my other devices, my AirPods, my watch. Like they, they all, everyone talks about the, the, the walled guard and the ecosystem being a negative. Personally, I don't think that's the case. Every manufacturer's dream is to have an ecosystem of products that all work really well together. And currently Apple is still the best ecosystem. Everything just works together so much better. There are close alternatives. Samsung, for example, Huawei, you know, there are good options, but none of them are quite as efficient. And I think until that is the case, Apple will still continue to have a large share of sales. Right, bonus time giveaway. Number one, my favorite phone accessory of the last year. Number two, my pick for breakthrough brand of the last year. Number three, three, four, how many have I done? Don't know. Hmm. So firstly, best phone accessory of the year. Apple Watch Ultra, incredible. It's expensive, it's very pricey, you know, don't get me wrong. But if you can afford it, it's been amazing to use in conjunction with the iPhone. Just a great, great, probably a, a more exciting product than the iPhone this year, per last year, the last year, you know. Number two, breakthrough brand of the year. And I've got two, actually. Realme and IQ, if that's how you pronounce it. What? those two companies have done in the last year or so is really quite brilliant. I'm so excited for where they're going to go next because they've made some really good devices. So good luck to those two. And of course, if you're still here, giveaway time, baby. Head over to my Instagram, ASB underscore YT. Find the post that's related to this video. Drop a like on it comment underneath it what your favorite smartphone is currently right now and the reasons why and you'll be automatically entered into a random chance at winning the better late than never christmas giveaway i'm going to give away for this um where are you a poco f4 gt decent phone that so that is the giveaway prize like the post comment your favorite phone and why, and yeah, good luck. Now, if you are looking at purchasing a brand new phone, then getting the right data packages is also essential. And if you travel internationally at all, you'll know that roaming fees can be sometimes astronomical. Until now. Meet today's video sponsor, Aerolo. Affordable connectivity when traveling is often a huge problem, but Aerolo is the world's first eSIM store that solves the pain of high roaming bills by giving you access to 200 plus countries globally at affordable prices. Your travel connectivity solution. A lot of phones nowadays have dual SIM, but sometimes managing additional SIM cards can be slightly tedious and inconvenient, as can searching for free Wi-Fi to connect to when abroad. With Aerolo, you can instantly connect from the moment you arrive. It is seamless. Seamless and seamless at the same, no? 
I thought that was a good one. <laughs> Everything can be done within the really easy to use app. Simply select either an individual country, region of countries, or global option, then choose the amount of data and time frame and click buy now. You can still also receive all of your calls, etc., from your original home country number, so you'll never miss important information. Also, the fact that Apple launched an eSIM only device in certain regions in 2022, you could argue that travel eSIMs are going to be essential. Now, two things to note. One, your phone must be eSIM compatible, and two, it must be network unlocked. All of the info will be left in the video description below, so if you are interested, make sure you go and check it out. And I'll also leave link the Aerolo YouTube channel, which has more information on how to set up and activate your eSIMs. Also, follow me on TikTok if you like shorter form tech content, and Twitter if you want a bit of banter. Chat. Boom, boom. My name's Adam. You've been the best as always. I love you, Nevi. I'll see you in the next one. Let's be your TP's out.